Okay, very good morning to you all. Good morning, Shelley Christian Fellowship. Very good morning. morning. Warm welcome to you on this uh, lovely foggy, I was going to say November, but we're now into December. Christmas is coming. Have you all done your Christmas shopping? You've got your jumper. Well, yeah, that's, well, that's more festive than I'm looking. A really warm welcome to you all and a warm welcome to all of you on Facebook. This is the first time, I must admit, I've um, posted a service where we're feeling Facebook land. So uh, I think it's the first time that Claire has been our director of technology this morning. Don't call me that. So, <laughs> so anything really could happen. In the, in the next hour, Richard has already taken a bit of a flight, sort of tripping over his wires. But thankfully, we're reminded of the fact that God is in control, is he not? Now, unfortunately, uh, Ross, who was due to be here today, our senior pastor at Cheney Christian Fellowship, he was taken ill during the week. So um, he has had, unfortunately, a cyst um, that burst, and he was in a huge amount of pain. And we're going to be praying for, for Ross, um, who's convalescing at home. Um, so Julie uh, and Margaret will be leading us in prayer later on. Margaret's now going to share with you a psalm that uh, has brought me a lot of comfort over many, many years. Margaret. This is Psalm 121. The Lord will keep you from all harm. I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The light is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, so, uh, Ross was going to be preaching this morning. Um, and he was going to be sharing a word on the final... Uh, uh, well, giving a sermon on this um, series, the last sermon in the series that we've been looking at in terms of values here at Shelley Christian Fellowship. Um, time seems to have evaporated like nothing else this year, but I believe it's almost only a few months since we launched our new strategic plan at Shelley Christian Fellowship. And with that, we have some values. And values are important, aren't they? Because they very much sort of guide the way in which we undertake everything that we do, and particularly, of course, in respect to Shelley Christian Fellowship, they guide the work that God has given us to do, um, which we've encapsulated in our new vision to lead, I've noticed I'm having to read this, I haven't quite yet sort of got this to memory, but uh, to lead people to Jesus Christ through word and action and the power of the Spirit to disciple them to be fully devoted followers. And today, Ross was going to be looking at empowering, and I'm sure he will, I think he's actually already prepared the sermon, um, and I'm sure he will uh, sort of, uh, uh, preach that virtually, maybe, or at another time. So this isn't to sort of necessarily sort of do what Ross was going to do. Um, if I'm quite honest, when we knew that Ross wasn't going to be sort of here, um, I, I didn't really feel sort of as though that I actually wanted to sort of come and preach. But God being God has his way of putting things on your heart, doesn't he? Even when maybe you don't want to sort of do things. And he was just encouraging me to sort of share this word with you this morning. So I'm just going to briefly say a few words about empowering. And in our sort of values, our sort of value statement that, in, that is in our strategic plan, we've defined empowering as being a family who aim to help each other to become more like Jesus Christ and ultimately to become everything that God has created each one of us to be. And this, this word empower, it's, a, it's an interesting thing because it's, it seems to have come, become a lot more sort of commonplace, certainly than I remember it being um, sort of 20 or so years ago. And it means to give someone the authority or the power to do something. I say that's what it means, that's what Google says it means, so I'm just trusting maybe incorrectly that that's what it does mean. But, 
Um, the, as I say, it means to give someone the authority or the power to do something. And probably it's become sort of so vital and, and, and so ubiquitous in everyday life because actually organisations have cottoned on to the fact that it's really important that if they're going to grow and they're going to grow healthily, then their people, their staff need to be empowered. So they need to be given the opportunity actually to sort of actually do the work that they're called to do in the best way that they can do it. And I think as a leadership team, if, if you like, that natural application of empowerment was something that we recognised, it was something that was on sort of your heart when we looked at all those values, that that, that natural application, or that, sorry, that sense of empowerment was really important. And as a leadership team, we really wanted to get behind every single one of you to help you and support you to achieve everything that God is putting on your heart. Now, that, so in, in some senses, I guess what I'm saying is that what we wanted to do as a leadership team was to give you license. So to actually encourage you to step out into the things that God is putting to, onto every single one of your hearts. Um, we were just praying, weren't we, um, Julie, I think you were sort of just praying there for Ross in terms of, you know, God has given Ross a mission on this earth and that mission will not fail. God will accomplish his plans. Praise God. But that's not just true for Ross. That's true for every single one of you, every, every part of the body of Christ. We're a body. I think Jim was preaching on this a little while back, wasn't he, that, you know, we're hands and feet and legs and eyes and... Every single facet, every part of the body has a purpose, has a role to play. And so God is calling you to play your part. And in terms of empowerment, in terms of natural application of empowerment, as I say, as a leadership team, we want to be able to support you and get behind you. And, you know, that might be that um, maybe God is saying to you already, actually, he's encouraging you to serve in a particular capacity. Maybe it might be sort of joining Richard and making sure he doesn't trip over wires in the future. <laughs> uh, maybe, you know, if that CD there, maybe it might be the healing rooms and actually serving there. Maybe it might be serving on the leadership team. That would be fantastic. We need more leaders, please. But maybe it might be something like Alpha, leading or serving on an Alpha or freedom in Christ. Maybe it might be something we've never thought of, and actually something really powerful that God has been putting on your heart. Maybe it's something that God has been putting on your heart for years and years and years and years, and it's never been the quite, quite the right time. And here's an opportunity. Um, we also sort of, it's not just a, a, I guess, the natural application of an empowerment is not just about a leadership team empowering other people though, it's also about the fact, um, in terms of a natural application, it's about us empowering one another, isn't it? We can encourage one another to step out in faith, or at least that's what we're called to be doing. <coughs> and of course, as we sort of um, develop our understanding of the scriptures, we're called to, to challenge each other. I mean, the Bible refers to it as iron sharpening iron. We're called to pursue actually what the word of God is speaking into our lives. And actually, he's calling us to challenge one another, to see what he is saying, speaking into any sort of given situation. Now, I'm sure Ross could say, and I'm sure he'd say probably a lot better than I just said it there, but um, I'm sure he'll speak further on that at, at, at some point. But actually, that natural application of empowerment, what it is to empower somebody, is not what actually God wanted to, me to really talk about this morning. Because... Um, as well as there being a sort of natural application, a natural way in which we empower one another to achieve this vision, the vision that God has given us here at Shenley, there's a far more powerful way, a supernatural way in which we can be empowered. And that is when God himself empowers every single one of us, when he gives us his power Remember, empowerment is about giving authority, giving power to, to accomplish something. And so truly, I, I truly believe this, and this is I think what God was putting in my heart this morning. When you look at that strategy document that we've got, that three-year vision, when you think about the fact, you know, this wonderful building that we've got, 
and a second phase that we want to build. And a whole community out there that is in dark, I mean, literally are this morning, aren't they? It's really foggy. But they but literally in the spiritual darkness. And they need to hear the, the, and see the light of Christ in their lives. We need to be empowered. That, that vision is too big. It is huge. So we really do need that power to come from God. And the reason we need it, I, I think, is sort of threefold. I mean, probably first as I was just saying. Um, quite simply, our own strength is not going to be sufficient. It's, it's just not going to be enough. We're going to run out of steam pretty quickly. If I'm honest, I was saying with sort of Julie this morning, um, it's probably just a result of the pandemic, pandemic I'm sure. But I've just been absolutely exhausted. I mean, to the point of, you know when you get so tired, you actually feel like crying when another thing comes and you think, please, <laughs> not anymore. And so when uh, I heard that Paul Ross um, was not going to be here this morning, I must admit I felt that I really felt like crying. Um, I just reached the end of myself. I, I just just had no more strength. And I'm sure it's the same for, for us all. When, when actually, when we hear about, great, we've got this strategic vision, all these things that need doing, actually think, I have just not got anything left in me to give God. Second reason why, actually, we can't rely on our strength, but actually have to depend on God's strength, is because if we do it in our way and our strength, then guess who's going to get the glory? It's going to be us, isn't it? When actually what we're doing this for is to give God the glory, to praise God. And then thirdly, probably the, the simplest and the, the most obvious and important, is the fact that actually God commands us not to do it in our strength, but to do it in his. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. Instead, we're to be a church empowered by the Holy Spirit. Given power, given strength, given authority to pursue the mission that God has called us to here in Shenley, in Milton Keynes, in, I was going to say 2020, but let's roll forward a few days to 2021 and beyond. Because quite simply, as I said, we can't achieve what God has called us to do if we try to do it in our strength. It's just not going to be enough. Look at it another way. Um, I was listening to a preach um, this morning, and uh, as I was getting ready, and uh, I, th I think that the quote was something like, at the moment, there are hundreds of millions of believers around the world, and actually it was about the persecuted church and how there are hundreds of millions of persecuted Christians. And then when you sort of think about that, you think, well, God, goodness me, you know, how many true believers are there in the world at the moment? You know, millions upon millions upon millions. But we're in 2020, so think about this church age that we're in since Christ came, and think about all those that have professed the faith since Christ came, and think about the millions upon millions upon millions or billions of Christians that we all will one day meet in heaven and join in praise and worship to God, our Heavenly Father. So there's this huge church, and yes, we know that it's God, it, it, it's Christ Jesus who builds his church. But those that believe in him, in other words, us, we're Christ's co-workers, aren't we? We're his fellow labourers. And yet all those years ago, yes, we're a sort of church of, of, of millions, but those first co-workers in Christ, the disciples, probably the most important of the, the, the co-workers, if you like, because we followed in their footsteps, they were just a small group of scared, proud, confused, doubting, prideful people huddled together in a room, a bit like we are today, <clears throat> And they didn't have a clue what future was in store for them because they had just witnessed the very one that they had just given up everything that they had to follow Christ Jesus because he was promising that 
I will lead you back to God, your heavenly father. I will make it right. And they just witnessed his brutal execution. To me, there is absolutely no way, humanly, in a natural way, that we today, 2020, could have a church of millions upon millions upon millions of people if it was purely dependent upon mankind's natural ability. It just could not happen. We're too weak, we're too fickle, we're too easily distracted, we're too easily tempted. We're just not strong enough. We're not, we're not good enough, believe it or not. We're just not. We, it's just not. Yeah. Sorry, Maxine, I didn't mean to look sort of directly <laughs> as, as I said that. Don't take that personally. Just rebuke that. <laughs> Okay, but just think about those first co-workers sort of in, in that upper room where they were all sort of congregated together. Because what happened? Christ Jesus appeared to them, didn't he? They're all scared, confused, doubting, prideful, as I was saying. And he stands in front of them and he starts showing them his scars. And he said, well, well, you know, this is just as I promised. This is exactly what I said would happen. And here now am I the living proof. And the penny drops and they realise, my goodness, everything that he said was true. That he, he would die just as he died. But that he would rise again. And he did rise again. And therefore, just as he said would be the case, he is the Christ. He is the Messiah. Hallelujah. Isn't that amazing? Sorry, it's just like this. That is incredible. And then when he was with them, having shown them the scars, he gives them a charge. He says, I want you to go and do something. But he then gives them a promise. And his charge to them is, you guys, you men and women, you are going to go out there and tell the whole world about me, about Jesus. You're going to tell them about my life, what you've witnessed, what you've seen. So the miracles like we've been hearing about with Raphael and Claire's director of technology. <laughs> You're going to go and tell the world about this incredible God who is living and is actually alive and working in my life and in the lives of all the other believers, the millions around the whole world. That's your job. That's our job. That's my job. Every single one of us. Our job is to go and tell the rest of the world. You're going to tell the world it's okay. God's got it sorted out. He's made a way back to a right relationship with him. But, and this is really important. First... You're going to wait. You're going to wait until you have been clothed with power from on high. You're going to wait until you have been empowered, until you have been gifted the Holy Spirit. And he says in, excuse me, in Acts 1, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. You see what he was doing? He gives them the charge, he gives them their mission, says, that's your job, go out and do it, but I'm not asking you to do it in your own strength. I'm going to give you my power. I'm going to give you my spirit. I am going to give you every promise that I said, and I've sort of given throughout the whole of age, all, all ages. I am going to give this to you through the Holy Spirit that will indwell you. And of course, Jesus being Jesus, the promise is kept, the day of Pentecost comes, they're all together, and the house is filled with the blowing wind and tongues of fire swirling about the place, then sort of come and land on all the believers in the room, and they all start talking in all sorts of different languages. I would not sorry, Richard, I saw you and I was just thinking, I wonder if Geordie was one of those languages. <laughs> well, yeah, is, that, is, that, is that language? <laughs> <laughs> but the incredible thing there was that, yes, they're all talking in different languages and they can all understand one another in different languages. 
But that passage then says, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. Not just a sort of few select people, not just Ross or Harvey or Julie or Margaret or Richard. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. And then, of course, Peter stands up, doesn't he? And he preaches probably one of the most amazing sermons that's ever been preached. And by the end of the day, 3,000 people are added to the church. That's a heck of a day, isn't it? I mean, goodness me, talk about church building. That's the way to do it. 3,000 people. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. And just to close, I'm going to let you into a secret. You might not have noticed, but it's, it's really important. So, ears back. Jesus Christ is alive. He's alive. But what happened there is those promises for then are promises for us today. That same empowerment, that same gifting of the Spirit to fulfill the mission of God, that's as true for us today. The charge is still true for us today, isn't it? To go and preach, to go and tell the whole world about who this man Jesus is. The fact that he is alive, that he is living and working as we've been hearing. But equally, we're called not to do it in our strength, but to do it in his strength. And the incredible thing is, it's always been that way. It's not as though this is just a New Testament thing. Look back to uh, the Old Testament, to Ezekiel. God made his people a promise. He said, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. It's a promise, promise true for us today. In Joel. We read, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. It couldn't be any clearer, really, could it? Uh, and is it me? It's, just, it's like it's there, it's just so clear. God is giving us a charge to go and tell the world, but he's giving us his spirit. And do you know what? We have a good father. We have a really good father who doesn't make us a promise and then doesn't keep it. And Jesus said, didn't he? Ask and seek and knock. So I think we've got this vision. We've got this amazing vision. We've got these values. But we can ask God now for the power to fulfill that vision. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. So if I could ask Steph and Richard and Roger, the amazing trio, <laughs> to come back. We're going to take some time. And if you could just start maybe in playing in the background, that would be great. I would just like to take a bit of time. And what I would like to do is to take the word at its word, to ask and seek and knock, and ask for the Holy Spirit to empower us, to fill us with the strength that we need to accomplish the mission that he's given us. So, can I just encourage you, um, to obviously to all of you in the room, to those of you on Facebook, um, put the cat out. Let's see if you not, you may not put a cat here, but put the cat out. Let's just focus on God. Let's just focus on that fact that Christ is alive. Christ Jesus is alive. That we were never meant to do this thing called church alone. We were never meant to do it in our own strength. Let's focus on the fact that just as we were hearing in our prayers earlier, that we each have a calling. 
something that God is imparting to our soul, to our heart, to everything about us. And he's saying, that's what I want you to do. This is what I'm passionate about, and I want you to be passionate about it. But I'm not calling you to do it on your own. I am going to equip you. I am going to empower you. Father God, we thank you for your son. Because simply, Lord, we know that we would not be here today were it not for him. We thank you, Lord God, for the faith of the church, Lord God, the living church through the ages. Those co-workers, Lord God, that have laboured day and night to see the word preached, to see love demonstrated. And Father, we, maybe, Lord, I, I just want to start by saying, Father, for all of us, if there has been anything that we have done where we have been more reliant on our strength than yours, on our ability rather than yours, then Lord, we confess that sin to you right now and say, Lord, please forgive us. Because Lord God, we want to see your church built here at Shenley Christian Fellowship. We want to see it built the way, Lord, you would have it built. We want to see, Lord God, people living in right relationship with you. We want to see people, Lord God, fulfilled. Fulfilled in all that you are, Lord God. In them becoming the very likeness of Christ. But Lord God, we recognise that we just do not have the skills, abilities, or power to do this. We need you, Holy Spirit. And so I pray, Lord God, please, in the name of Jesus Christ, fill us afresh this morning. Equip us, empower us, Holy God, with your life-giving spirit to accomplish the mission that you have called us to. This is resonating for you this morning. And God is bringing to mind, as he does, if he's convicting the heart. And that thing that he's been nudging you about for days and weeks and months and years. Let's, let's not quench the Holy Spirit this morning. Let's, let's say, I do. Let's say, yes, Lord. Let's receive that gift of the Holy Spirit. Just as you receive a present, hopefully you'll be receiving a present this Christmas. Just receive that in your heart. And say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your power. And I'm going to trust you, Lord God, that you've equipped me with everything I need to fulfill this, whatever this is that you have given me, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Father God, we thank you for your Son. We thank you for your Holy Spirit living and working in us. And Lord God, as we've been hearing and as we've been singing this morning, Father God, help us go out and tell the world that the King is alive. That death is defeated, that the King is alive. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Oh, hello. I wasn't expecting that, you can tell. <laughs> Hi everybody. When Julie asked that we should pray for Ross, um, I just asked, do you not know, have you not had? So I wanted to check and then I thought I won't say anything. And then as everyone was preaching, it keeps coming. So I found the passage, so I just thought I'll share it and I hope we we'll go out with that. The song we have sung telling us hope we arise and that is what actually prepared me to come and share it so it's isaiah chapter 40 verses 28 to 31 do you not know have you not heard the lord is the everlasting god 
the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength, they will soar on wings like eagles, they will run and not grow weary, they will walk and not be faint. Because I sense in my spirit when the thing came round, I don't know about you, one thing I thought was, Ross is a man of God. We are people in our church, Emma and Bobby, they believe in God. And with this pandemic, we are all exhausted, we are all tired. And I hope we will draw on that, that our God, we cannot understand, we cannot fathom his understanding, because he knows all things, and he's got our back. Even when we feel tired, we will renew our strength. But one thing we need to do is we need to hope in the Lord. And because he said he will renew our strength when we open him. And I hope that can sustain us as we go this week. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Have a wonderful week ahead. Look after yourselves, look after one another. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this morning's service. It's been great to have you with us. I just wanted to very briefly share with you how you can give your heart to Jesus. I gave my heart to Jesus. I became a Christian when I was eight years old at a kids summer holiday club. And it was an amazing time. And I remember praying a very simple prayer and I remember the feeling in my heart, in my life, that I just had that feeling inside of me, something changed when Jesus came into my life. And the great thing is that when we do it, when we ask Jesus into our life, he doesn't just add it onto his to-do list, it happens straight away, straight away. And it's just, it's, it's the best decision we could make in life. You can change the trajectory of your life when you ask him in. And when he comes in, he comes in to, to be your friend, to be your Lord, to be your saviour, to be your helper in difficult times. And you know, I've been through some incredibly difficult times in my life, but I know that God has helped me every step of the way. Jesus has been with me every step of the way. And when I've had important decisions to make, I've prayed about them. And Jesus has helped me to make the right decision. When I've gone through tough times, he's comforted me and enabled me to get through those difficult times where otherwise I probably would have taken another course of action, but he's helped me in those times. And so when I was eight years old, I remember praying a very simple prayer, and, and the prayer involved just these few simple sentences. I asked Jesus to forgive me. I admitted that I'd done something wrong. I repented of my sin, and I made that 180 degree turn to start following him. And so if you want to do that this morning, if you want to take that step, that I want to help you pray that prayer. So if you're ready for that now, let's do it now. So just pray after me. Lord Jesus, I recognize that I have sinned. I recognize that I've done my life my way. I'm sorry for the things I've done wrong. I repent of my sin. Please come into my life. I choose right here, right now to make that 180 degree turn and start following you and living my life the way you would want me to. Please come into my life to be my Lord and Saviour. And if you've prayed that, then that's then fantastic. I'm so pleased for you that you've changed the trajectory of your life. You have made the most important decision you could make in your entire life. But I want you to do two things for me. The first thing is this. I want you to get in contact with me and let me know that you've prayed that prayer. And the reason is because then we can be accountable to one another. 
and we can support one another. So when you send me an email, the email address will come up at the bottom of the screen. I can get back in touch with you and I can send you some, some information to help you uh, on your journey as a new Christian. The second thing I want you to do is to get into a good church. Now, I don't know where you live. If you live in Milton Keynes, you're welcome to come to Shenley Christian Fellowship, or there are other great churches in this city that you can be a part of. But if you live at other places in the country, then I want to try and help you find the church to be a part of. It's important that we're part of a church which is welcoming, a church that teaches the Bible, a church that believes in great worship, and also a church that will help you on your journey as a Christian, we call it discipleship, but, but it's basically teaching us how to, how to live our life as a Christian. And so I wanna help you do that if I possibly can. So thank you for being with us this morning. I'm so pleased that you made that step, but if you haven't prayed that prayer and you still need time to think, then I want to encourage you to think it through. And I wanna encourage you to pray and ask Jesus and say, can you help me in making this decision? Because he will do that. And, uh, and we, I just want to bless you this morning. So just take care and stay safe.